Clearly, no easy choices for India as well as the global community that backed the democratically elected leadership of Afghanistan. What is the best way forward from here onwards? To discuss this and more, I'm joined by a special panel of guests. From Colombo, I'm joined by M. Ashraf Hedri, the serving ambassador of Afghanistan to Sri Lanka. From Boston, we have Glenn Carl, a former American intelligence officer. And from New Delhi, we are joined by Gautam Mukhopadhyay, the former Indian ambassador to Afghanistan. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for being here with us. Glenn Carl, if I can come to you first, how embarrassing are things looking for the United States at this point? America is now conveniently blaming the Afghan forces for the mess on the ground. To what extent can the U.S. succeed in deflecting blame with these statements? Well, it's a bad moment for everyone, in particular for the 33 million, I guess it is, uh, Afghans, and especially for the 16 million or so uh, female Afghans. Uh, but the United States was in, uh, had a Hobson's choice, where it could continue uh, indefinitely, it had already continued for 20 years, uh, without succeeding, uh, or it could decide that uh, its vital national interests were uh, elsewhere, uh, which is what it did. So there is no happy or successful way to uh, undo a, uh, a losing proposition, and, and that's the circumstance that the U.S. is in. Ambassador Mukhopadhyay, this is a crisis that carries serious implications uh, for India. What stance should New Delhi be taking at this point? Right. And now first, let me compliment you for your absolutely excellent introduction. I think very perceptive points that you made, that you made there. And you also listed out those four options that we have. Uh, you know, this is a very fresh situation. This is a, a situation that I think nobody could have anticipated, uh, you know, even perhaps a month back. So I would say that uh, at this point of time, we need to watch and wait. We need to how, see how things evolve. But that doesn't mean being a passive spectator. Uh, it means definitely being involved. So I think one of the first things is, you know, the real problem right now is confusion. There's a humanitarian disaster facing you. There are people needing to get out of the country, passports, visas, you know, just temporary asylum of some sorts. And I think we need to focus on that. And if it's if it's we need to be pragmatic. But we will have time to take stock. What we should really watch is what the Taliban do, whether uh, they in fact uh, you know, uh, live up to the kind of polished promises that they have been making uh, in their statements and in Doha. And the second thing that we need to do is see what the Afghan people, because they are really in the middle of this, what the Afghan people will do. Uh, and really whatever we do should be oriented towards what the Afghan people want. Uh, which means that if the Afghan people want a temporary truce, I think we have to live with that. If they want a resistance, which may come after a short while, after they have regrouped, then we should consider our options then. But I think in principle, we should be very clear that we stand for a new generation of Afghans, the gains of the last 20 years, the emblematic uh, you know, rights and opportunities Right, very important point being made there by Ambassador Mukhopadhyay. We're losing that line. We'll just try and re-establish that link. Uh, coming to you, uh, Ambassador Hedri, at this point, as the Taliban uh, prepare to establish their government, have you received any message from them? Has the Taliban passed on any instructions to the diplomats about their future plans? Now, let me first respond to the first speaker. Of course, I... Uh, agree with the first point uh, uh, or two of what he said, but you know, on the uh, decision uh, of the United States to leave Afghanistan, indeed, it was a sovereign decision, which uh, we have always welcomed. And the president who left Afghanistan, President Ghani, uh, repeatedly welcomed that and appreciated that. But uh, we only disagree with the way it happened. We also disagree that it wasn't really, you know, an open-ended mission remember that the united states have had many open-ended missions uh, compared to which this mission of 2500 with the enablers uh, you know is financially much more cost effective meaning ask uh, you know cost the united states much less than what it has been doing elsewhere counting from south korea to germany to colombia to philippines and other places where 
you know, the country has deployed and stayed in for decades. Uh, and as a result, this was a low cost um, uh, mission with up, uh, you know, no arrest to the lives of American forces because all fighting has been done by the uh, Afghan forces, uh, uh, you know, since uh, the end of uh, the transition process in 2014. So this should not have, uh, unfortunately, discontinued and really uh, uh, happen in the way that uh, the Biden administration uh, decided it to happen against the very advice of uh, uh, his own uh, military uh, uh, advisors and as well as the intelligence estimate that came out warning against uh, a you know, what we are seeing today, and as well as, uh, you know, increased links and deepened links between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And we saw that in the northeast of Afghanistan, where the Taliban were actually assisted actively by Al-Qaeda, by ETIM, East Turkestan Islamic Movement, uh, with a focus on China, Islamic uh, uh, Movement of uh, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, with a focus on uh, Central uh, Asia. And of course, they were also joined by uh, you know a dozen other uh, terrorist outposts based in uh, in our neighborhood. Uh, so as a result, I think the uh, mission would have definitely been worth it. Uh, uh, absolutely, given what we are uh, seeing today, which has cost the United States so much, unfortunately, credibility, uh, image, and and uh, a betrayal of you know democracy, freedom, human rights, women's rights, and look at, you know, the Afghan women and their kids on those, you know, uh, Kabul International Airport tarmac are trying to somehow get a chance to get on a plane that, you know, uh, of course, had already been uh, leaving. And unfortunately, some of those young men did cling on the plane, and unfortunately, several of them dropped. And I don't know what happened to others. I don't know how many uh, got on that. So that depression, that fear, that could have been avoided, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it didn't. To the point of uh, the ambassador, exactly. Right now, we have to wait and see uh, whether, you know, the Taliban would actually deliver on the assurances that they've been making, including a general amnesty, which, uh, you know, has to be consistent with the international human rights and humanitarian uh, laws and the implementation of that to avoid, you know, targeting any persecution, any extrajudicial you know, act against any Afghans, including those who have worked with the uh, people, uh, with the government of uh, uh, Afghanistan. So it all remains to be seen. And then now we also uh, saw the emergency session of the United Nations Security Council, where the, uh, you know, Secretary General uh, delivered a very strong statement all calling on all key stakeholders, including the Taliban, to really, uh, you know, help stabilize the situation and uh, move forward uh, to, uh, you know, form an inclusive uh, government so that all voices of the Afghan people are included in order to ensure, you know, sustainable uh, peace and stability uh, as soon as the, you know, cessation of all violence and all acts of, you know, terror as uh, actually seized and verified and monitored by the United uh, Nations, words that were echoed by the Afghan ambassador to the United Nations. Right. Right. Uh, Glenn Carl, uh, speaking of international intervention, how optimistic are you about the role that the United Nations can play at this point? Uh, we've also had statements from the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, for example, talking about how the international community should not legitimize the Taliban leadership. Uh, statements like the one given out by Boris Johnson sound incredibly good during press conferences, sound excellent on paper, but uh, they do not unfortunately change things on the ground. Well, I'm an ardent uh, supporter of the United Nations and the international uh, system. Uh, but uh, unless all five of the uh, permanent five members of the Security Council uh, agree uh, in extreme situations such as this uh, with the uh, use of force, um, it, the institution is fundamentally paralyzed. Now, the UN does wonderful work in a whole range of areas. And humanitarian work is one of the foremost. So it's possible that the UN can mitigate, um, if the Taliban allow it, uh, some of the uh, terrible things that are likely to evolve. Uh, but I'm not optimistic at all uh, that the UN can, uh, in the international system, absent uh, the uh, use of force, uh, can uh, shape matters very successfully, or if at all. Uh, in Afghanistan.
Ambassador Mukhopadhyay, a lot at stake here for India, especially uh, given the developmental projects there. Uh, India has also been mulling, uh, giving refuge to Afghans uh, fleeing persecution. Uh, what is your view on the same? Oh, I strongly believe that India should uh, open its doors, uh, of course, within, uh, within its means, uh, to people who are in danger, people who have been closely associated with us, uh, people who are likely to face uh, witch hunt or persecution. I also think that we should provide a space, a kind of temporary space for relocation for a lot of institutions that are going to suffer on account of this. One of them is media organizations, think tanks, you know, Afghan scholars, uh, civil society activists, uh, all those who have actually stood for the gains of the last 20 years. Of course, I'm not saying that we should be indiscriminate here. We are just talking at this point about uh, uh, visas to be able to uh, fly to some kind of safety and, and you know, the further measures would have to be thought of uh, later. They would naturally need, be need, to, uh, need to be some burden sharing. We should continue the kind of support that we have provided for Afghan in India. Uh, you know, education, medical treatment, uh, various kinds of diplomatic support. Uh, you know, I, I, I won't list them all, but there's a lot that we can do even sitting in India. I think the kind of moral support, uh, the kind of diplomatic support uh, is something that would go a long way uh, at this stage and we should not take a narrow uh, view of that. Uh, may I also just uh, comment on two points? I think the point that uh, you, you talked about the clip where uh, uh, Secretary Blinken actually blamed the Afghan forces for their debacle, for their, uh, you know, kind of dissolution, their collapse. You know, let's be clear, the Americans did spend money on the Afghan National Defense and Security Forces, but they only spent uh, money in line with their counter-terrorism objectives. Uh, in other words, they basically invested in a counter-terrorist special forces units. They did not really develop the Afghan National Army. They did not spend money for the international, uh, Afghan National Army uh, to be able to defend territory, whole territory, and to be able to defend territory and whole territory and deal with the kind of practically uh, invasion uh, that has taken place from Pakistan. And partly it did this because uh, Pakistan ensured that Afghanistan would not have a national army. So I think it's a bit rich to blame the Afghan national army when they've been literally abandoned overnight for not being able to perform. Of course, there are lots of problems on their own, but I think it's a bit rich, rich to put all the blame on the Afghan army. And as far as the international community, is concerned. I think the international community has hoodwinked the world into thinking that there is going to be a negotiated political settlement. I think it was clear, crystal clear, in the US Taliban deal that the entire decks had been stacked in favor of the Taliban, preferably by negotiation, but if not by negotiation, you know, just by, by force. And uh, uh, I think the Taliban and their masterminds have waited for the day when the U.S. will pull out its troops, and even before waiting for the last 15 days of August, uh, uh, they have uh, not been able to contain themselves and entered Kabul. One would have thought that they would have at least allowed the Americans to leave in peace. Sir Hedri, we're completely running out of time, but coming to you for some closing remarks. Uh, uh, extremely precarious situation like we discussed, uh, but do you plan on returning to Kabul at some point? What is Sri Lanka's strategy going to be from here onwards? Well, of course, the Taliban have not been um, uh, recognized and they will not be recognized unless and until they really, you know, accept the key conditions of the international community consistent with the uh, international laws and conventions and all the obligations that the government of Afghanistan has had and committed, including, you know, preservation and consolidation of our basic uh, human rights and achievements that the people of Afghanistan uh, um, have had. And so consistent with, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, we will see how this will uh, develop. Uh, it is too premature to uh, comment on that. Uh, we will continue uh, our jobs and uh, we will see how uh, the situation uh, moves uh, forward. And right now, very much diplomacy, drawing attention to the suffering of the Afghan people and uh, addressing their basic needs, especially of those 18 million Afghans and also calling on the international community to meet the uh, UN humanitarian appeal for $1.3 billion. About so only 30% of that has been so far met. This is another opportunity, opportunity for the international uh, community, especially our neighbors. Uh, right. To 
Right. Ambassador Hetri, Ambassador Mukhopadhyay and Glenn Carl appreciate very much for joining us on this edition of Gravitas with those perspectives. Uh, we are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.